once you've uh, been accepted to medical school and you know you've got the grades and you know that you're going to come along to medical school, it's a good idea to try and find out well, really, what the what are the guts of that course going to look like in the first you know few months of that course? Um, again, if you can find somebody on that course ahead of time and and speak to them and say, well, what was useful for you? Most medical schools will uh, help you do that because they'll have a welcome week where people will come along and they will tell you what you need to do over the next few weeks and months. Uh, they'll often have an opportunity there to speak to other medical students who've been uh, ahead of you. Many medical schools will have some sort of buddy scheme that will put you in touch with a student who is a year or two ahead of you so that you can feel that you're, you're not going to be left alone or you're not going to, to, to know what to do. Some students think, well, I must go away and learn lots and lots of things before you come to medical school. I don't think you do. I think you, you just get your exams and you come to medical school and you'll be taught what you need. Each medical school will provide students with different things beforehand. Um, in our school, students are sent a link to uh, web pages which provide information about things that you can read in advance, so reading lists, things that you might find useful to know about where you get your equipment from, how to get to the library, that kind of thing. But most of the things are provided when you get there. So you will be uh, asked to fill in a questionnaire usually. Uh, which gives details of your health. I think it's important to realise that there are um, uh, only a few circumstances where it's very difficult for, a medical, for somebody to become a medical student who's got a disability. There's no e exclusive conditions which say that somebody should definitely not become a medical student because of a particular disability. And most medical schools will work very hard to provide reasonable adjustments to people. So you people shouldn't be frightened of that health screen. It's there uh, to offer support for students who perhaps need some additional uh, help or support to get through the course. All students will need to, at some point before they encounter patients, have been checked uh, for their TB status uh, and they will need to have been vaccinated against hepatitis B. Moving into that higher education environment has lots more self-directed learning. Universities and medical schools have lots of student support services available and they'll be both within the medical school and also within the wider university to help support people in that way and that would be to help them in terms of getting ready for um, managing the academic workload and adjusting to that new academic environment but also things like getting used to maybe living independently uh, and making that transition be it for day-to-day -day life chores or also things like finances or accommodation. Speaking to people who have been students in the last few years is one thing. Talking to your family about things like how you'll keep in touch with them. Making sure that you have brought a good student cookbook so that you can keep your nutrition right. And accepting, I think, that those first few months are really challenging for lots of people and it can be really tough for a bit. And if it is, to talk to folk and not bottle it all up.